Let's jump in ahead of myself. All right. Timey Wimey Tea Time, episode two. This is the pre show. Got Stan Farina here and Matt Bradford. And I'm uh, Yomar Lopez, aka Yogi Zilla. You can call me Yogi if you want. Whatever you want. Whatever makes you feel at home. How you guys doing? Good. My Hoovians. <laughs> My Hoovers. That's what we call them in Canada Hoovers. Hoovers. I like that. Yeah, I, I saw the whole. Uh, I saw a meme today where they had little vacuums. <laughs> and it said something about. Not for us Hoovers. And I'm like, I see what you did there. <laughs> So I totally just trolled uh, my fellow uh, hosts. I was like, all right, we're going to start. And I'm like, oh, wait, we're not streaming yet. Ha, 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 That's terrible of me. <laughs> that, was, that was bad. I'm sorry. Are we streaming now? We are streaming now. That's why I'm, that's why I'm talking to the audience. Okay. I, I know I'm crazy, but I wouldn't talk to myself like this. Oh, you might be trolling us again. <laughs> no, no. We're, we're really streaming. Uh, we're actually... Streaming on Geeky Antics channel and uh, my personal channel, Yogizilla. And the stream looks good. No lag, everything's smooth, frames are processing, bits are being sent through the ether of the internet. And everything is right with the world. Aww. We have a real treat for you guys tonight before we officially get started. Besides Matt being here. Oh, you. But, uh, and Matt's an old friend too. We, 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 uh, travel the same podcasting circles and communities and. Indeed. We have common friends that we didn't even know we had. It was a small world. Yeah, it was so weird. Yeah, dude, for real. <laughs> but uh, and, and we got Walker Stalker Con coming up. You're gonna be there? Yeah, dude. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, cool. It's such a big deal that my brother, like my brother and I, my little brother is kind of like the complete opposite of me. We never really do anything together, which is I know it's terrible to say. I love him <laughs> to death, yeah. but he's actually coming out here from New York to join me for it. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, well, I think we're going to do a, a tweet up or just a meet up at one of the bars there. So, oh my god, great. We got a bunch of people. That'd be fun. I, I want to apologize in advance. If my brother gets sloshed and he acts out of control, <laughs> I, I'm disowning him on the, on the spot and running away. <laughs> All right, man. You said it. I mean, he. There's been. T- there's, I've gotten plenty of like desperate uh, tweets from him and, well, not tweets, uh, text messages. Mm-hmm. Uh, a tweet wouldn't be a very good thing in the, in the case of an emergency. Text message is a little better. <laughs> and it'd be like, come to this bar, this address right now. And I'm like, what's happening? Fight. And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, One time he picked a fight with a bunch of army rangers. I'm like, really, dude? Oh, man. <laughs> <I'm an> idiot. <laughs> Sorry. Did you run? <laughs> yeah, see, Nick, Nick can tell you in the chat, uh, my brother gets out of control. When 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 uh, he's drunk, he's out of control when he's sober. So, <laughs> so see all this uh, this uh, pointless banter. So you guys in the community get to know us better on a, on a more personal level. That's true. Does this go out in like the main uh, recording as well? This part, no. The pre-show just no. goes up on the YouTube videos. Okay. So if we go a little longer, everybody gets the full. This is the full thing. experience going on right now. Exactly. Now I do want to make it make a note. We do not uh use any potty language. And we try oh, to... no cursing? No cursing. Uh... This is the like the one show on Geeky Antics Network, besides another show we have on Sunday, uh, that it's fa- completely family friendly. Okay, can I say frack? Like Battlestar Fra- Galactica? Frack you could do because that's about that's a good callback because we are sci fi and amongst other things. So that's perfect. How about bro? So just be careful, don't don't slip up. Because then I have yeah. a lot of editing to do. Frackin' A, man. I used to... Well, you can put, like, a little duck noise over my voice if I curse, right? <laughs> yeah, right. last time so, when uh, when Stan slipped up, because he got really excited. And Stan's a very, like, calm, kind of chill dude like me. But he's even yeah. more... He's got even more of, like, a zen kind of demeanor to him. He's always centered and just chill. But he, we got, he got excited, and he was like, F... F yeah, and I was like, oh. <laughs> so I put I put the Mortal Kombat side of it over it, and when I uh, did the post production stuff, and it was like toasty. Shayukin, <laughs> Shayukin. Actually, I think I kept episode zero oh, uncensored. Sorry. Yeah, I did keep it uncensored. I was I did put the toasty in there, but then I was like, you know what? There's like three in there, and that's so bad. No one's gonna mm-hmm. police that stuff. You know, no one's gonna report. It's like, oh no. I mean this. 
freaking television these days. They say far worse things, and they freaking it's like soft porn when you watch some of these shows. Anyway, I know, which is great. <laughs> depending, you know, <laughs> depending who you ask. Depending on who you ask, yeah. I believe I'd rather my kids see. Uh, can I say boobies? Well, I said it. I believe my kids can see boobies before he sees violence. I think uh, it's much yeah, more, much and more. Yeah, I agree. And it's like a double standard. It's like bad yeah. language and uh, sexual content is bad, but people getting blown up and heads chopped off, no problem. Yeah. What's more natural, you know, your body or someone getting murdered? Yeah, yeah exactly. But you know what? Just so you know, as a little backdrop to everything, we've been described by the community as one of the most intelligent, sensitive, and uh, deep uh, podcast out there so that's that's yeah. very flattering so we have Sword to live up to that, that streak for you guys <laughs> no i was gonna say we have to live up to that the bar has been set high i did not agree to that nope <laughs> not at all <laughs> and, and our unofficial uh slogan says, says the guy with like a bikini girl on his stream right now <laughs> yes da, da, da. <laughs> but hey in spite of that i mean that's that's doctor who that's that's valid i never liked river song by the way i might be blasphemy right now but i i hated her character dude <laughs> i got burned <laughs> at the <laughs> stake because i said that i wasn't a big fan of her that i liked her but i felt like she felt out of place on the show she, i felt she was wait she felt like she belonged in another show, like a one of those like Xena Warrior Princess shows where overacting is welcome. Like it, she just didn't. Sorry, Stan, are you are you a River Song fan? I'm okay with her, but I'm <laughs> okay. just, but I, I do have a problem when uh, it results in a, a brow beaten uh, doctor. Yeah. Not to mention, you know, the whole time she's smarter more resourceful than a doctor they did they did swap places at times when you know sometimes he'd be the damsel in this in distress and then vice versa uh-huh. you know they both saved each other's butts plenty of time but is they, they finally explain why how, why she was so smart and how she got to that point and how she got so chummy at the very end and it felt like so rushed when they finally got up to that so all this build up like why is she acting so familiar with the doctor why is he so much more brilliant, and why is this doctor so inept in the comparison? Why, what was that explanation again? I I think I know, but it was because their their relationship was in reverse, right? That that's part of it. Yeah, the timelines were in reverse. So spoilers, guys, if you haven't seen you know Matt Smith era uh, Doctor Who episodes. Uh, yeah, I think everybody right now has watched them, but not you know we're trying to we're trying to keep a spoiler light, but spoilers. Yes, uh, she was brainwashed by the consortium. To be to be an assassin to kill the doctor, and then a whole impossible uh, astronaut thing happened. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. But that's the thing. You don't remember it, do you? Because I barely remembered it until so much. Pretty throwaway, I think. I remember that whole her last episode was very rushed. I found. I just remember a pyramid. That was yeah. where when time went wild. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, that was kind of weird. King I Dean. Find, yeah. I find, and I don't know if we want to talk about the show, but I find, like, that's Doctor Who. Like, I love it and hate it sometimes. And the times when I hate it is when they're, like, we they just stuff so much into, like, one episode and you're just supposed to buy it. Oh, or, they just, yeah. or they just start you, like, in the middle, like, where you're just kind of trying to figure out what everyone's talking about for 20 minutes and you feel like you've missed an episode, but the show is just assuming that <laughs> they're going to catch you up at the end. Yep. Yeah, I, I feel, I feel that's, like that's bad storytelling. That's smart storytelling. That is a very good. That's a very good introduction, by the way, because okay. that's part of what we're gonna we're gonna talk to. Hopefully, we're gonna get to that. How, as a writer, when you try to set the stage and you have too much exposition and too many loose ends right off the bat, yeah, you know, you have all these overarching stories, underlying themes. You set the bar really high, and if you do not have a satisfactory conclusion to all of that, to bring it all back together. There's yeah. no sense of closure. And, and let's, let's face it, as fans, you know, especially if you're in a creative space, we're even more insatiable. And that what we have envisioned or what we hope for rarely ever happens. So it's always going to be a disappointment. And Stephen Moffat is pretty guilty of that. Um, and he's doing it already in Series 3. But I did want to mention real yeah. quick before I forget, King Dean said, who cares about, about all that? You know, in reference to River Song, the actress that plays said, <laughs> Have you seen her ju- jumping on a trampoline? Is nice. that side boob? Is that Rose side boob I see on your stream right now? It, it might be. 
Oh, I also want to note that in spite of that slideshow, we have predominantly female audience, which is very interesting. Then, ladies, hey, ladies, ladies, we I'm celebrate taking. the ladies. And w- yes, we, we do. really do. We really do. And Stan has a fan club because they love his sexy voice. They're like, please, oh, don't. Do that is a sexy voice. They only. I got to try to match that voice. <laughs> they only like my voice when I speak Spanish. It's like you know. Hola, bienvenido a uh, uh, Timey Wimey Tea Time. Yo tengo aquí a Matt Bradford <laughs> y Stan <laughs> Farina. Wepa! Arriba, arriba, arriba! <laughs> I, I gotta work on my soccer voice, apparently. <laughs> That's what yeah, I gotta do. Hooser, Hooser from Canada. So, uh, yeah, Doctor Who is uh, <laughs> sure. it's, That's it's doing a lot better this season, eh? It's just, uh, you know, it's getting <laughs> off the ground. Uh, lots of hosers. <laughs> You, oh yeah, when we do the introduction, you gotta tell people about a little bit about your uh, voice acting work too. I'll try. I'll plug it. It's good stuff. We have to expose people to that, so, including your what you did for uh, our buddy uh, Robert. Robert, Robert. I just I just did something else for him too, so hopefully that'll be up soon. Robert King is his last name, right? King. King. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's a good guy. I can do that at the end. It doesn't have to be a plug session. Oh, I know, but still, we want people because we we want you to. You're gonna be a recurring, you know, host. You know, not, it's not gonna be a week to week thing. Obviously, we we know. No, I can, guy. yeah, for sure. But you know, we want you to come best. We want people to get to know you. Right. This awesome. is tea time. People, friends, getting together, talking about stuff, and not really have too much direction. You know, whatever is that. I don't mind? know the Stan character. Okay. <laughs> he, seems, he seems like a cool guy. He he is a good guy. Everybody loves Stan. I'm Silent Bob. <laughs> All right, now for real, we're about to get started for reals, for reals. So I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, extensive pre-show. We, you know what? Next time we might have to tackle the River Song thing uh, and go deep on that. We'll so go deep on River Song is what you're saying. <laughs> so to that effect, because we don't want people to think Keep that it it's clean, just clean, man. Keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, our audience has chosen the slogan "Go deeper" for us, as you'll see in the, later in the show. All right, I got to turn off of uh, Video Game Outsiders mode. Go go back into my camp counselor mode. Yes, exactly. Go All back right. into pretend pretend your your kid is a uh, okay. la, 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 No, but I understand what you're saying. So, all right, I'll respect that. Let's, let's do this. I want to I'm hungry. I want dinner sometime tonight. But yes. I also want to talk some Doctor Who, so. Yes, definitely. So, uh yeah, but, but just to say you know, I would like to go back into that. So I don't want people to think that we're just hating at her because she's a strong female character. Because you know what? Doctor Who has had lots of strong females that weren't overdone and were brilliant. Sing Companion is a strong female character. I think River Song is out of place. That's nothing to do about her gender. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we can talk about it. All right. Don't so uh, this is the part where you guys uh, mute your mics and we uh, have some nice, sexy uh, intro music. You ready? Right. In three, two, one. Tiny Whiny Tea Time Greetings and welcome to Timey Wimey Tea Time. I'm Yomar, aka Yogizilla. And we got a real treat for you. Besides, uh, I might want to turn this off. Ooh, bad start. Let's take it from the top. Greetings and welcome to Timey Wimey Tea Time, guys. I'm uh, inept tonight, apparently. I had to redo the, the introduction because I had uh, something open that made my voice sound weird. But I hope you enjoyed that uh, intro, the intro song that we uh, worked so hard on. Did you enjoy that, guys? Magusta. Magusta. <laughs> I, 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 the whole time listening to that, I was wondering what kind of face Matt was making. And it was kind he was... of a puzzled slash uh, interested, <laughs> um, enticed a little bit. 
Ooh. I, like, I want to hear a little bit more. Yeah. That, that, that puts a smile on my face. I worked very hard on, on creating that theme. Me gusta. Who does the opening bit, uh, the timey whiny tea time? I did that. Look at you, a man of many talents. Yeah, I did, I did the music. That's actually, so Google, before you go, you know, whipping out the beat stick, that is original content. So you can't say that's <laughs> copyright infringement. All original. <laughs> so, yeah, just want to put that out there. I know, it sounds pretty Daft Punky to me, man. Dude, I'm gonna, that... spo- I'm gonna Spotify that after this episode. <laughs> I take that as a compliment, man. I didn't think it was anywhere near that kind of quality. <laughs> that is good stuff. Yeah, Maybe man. a little Skrillex. That is awesome. Yeah, dude. A that... Little Skrillex. Yeah, I felt like I was in a rave all of a sudden with like Hoovians. <laughs> well, Alex. Exterminate, 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 exterminate. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're not gonna get anything done tonight. <laughs> <laughs> But that's totally the vision we were going for, dude. Definitely, you you get the feels, man. You get the feels. I get the feels, buddy. So so tonight, you know, let's not let's not delay any further. We got Stan, <laughs> the man, Farina, and uh, we got another voice you might you might recognize or you may not. But if you don't, shame on you. This is Matt Bradford from uh, Zombie Cast, uh, Video Game Outsiders, and uh, all sorts of awesome stuff. We're gonna do we're gonna get into what everybody does. Uh, in a second here, but uh, how you guys doing? Good man, I'm thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Yes, and you're and you're on a uh, borrowed time, right? I know your tummy's rumbling. My timey wimey tummy is rumbling. <laughs> <laughs> time, time is running out. This is that magical time between uh, work and taking care of children that uh, it's it's called free time. So be, feel honored right now. Yes, we are. Oh yeah. And I'm honored to be with you, Stan. I've heard a lot about you, and of course, Yogi, my dear friend. So let's uh, let's talk about some. What are we talking about? Is it Breaking Bad? What's what's this podcast? Here? <laughs> Is it Arrow? No. Arrow. Crystal Math. Agents of Shield. <laughs> actually, <laughs> Agents you, of Shield. You actually did remind me. I, I did want to mention briefly uh, some other shows that we like besides Doctor Who, because uh, you know that's kind of a void in the science fiction and even fantasy spaces. I feel. I've mentioned mm. this quite often, but before we get into that, I want everybody to go through some introductions, because we always assume that someone might be joining us for Tea Time for the first time. Uh, oh, and I do want to mention that Alistair Kennedy from uh, 42 Level 1 is with us in spirit. Uh, Ali was supposed to be joining us. Uh, he's uh, out in Scotland, is he? Anything? Scotland? Scotland? Well, what time is it there? It's probably, what, 2 a.m. for him right now? Um, no, like, I don't 11, know my time difference. 11.30. I think it's pretty late. 11.30. Uh, um. GMT is like five hours ahead of Eastern. That's right. Which we're at, yeah. But he, I, I just talked to him. He's actually, he actually working late. That's why he couldn't make it. They changed his hours on him last minute. He was stoked ooh, to join ooh. us. But uh... tyrants. <laughs> <laughs> Where does he work? Uh, like you know, it's his personal information. But yeah, I, I, that's you know, for all everyone that does podcasting and writes, you know, if they have day jobs, I try not to jump and in, delve into that part of them because I think for a lot of us, it's like our dirty little secrets. Like well. I have this wonderful network and this uh, book that I have that's a New York Times best-selling novel, <laughs> but uh, during the day, I uh, collect trash. <laughs> hey, man, there's no bad jobs. There are no bad jobs, yeah. As long as you're providing for your family and you're living the dream, hey. Did you oh, hear I'm about not, that but teacher in Maryland? No, so there's this teacher in Maryland, uh, I guess elementary school. Anyway, he wrote uh, a couple of science fiction books, and uh, one of them is, I don't know, 500 years in the future where there's a, a massive uh, school shooting. Ooh. Now, he wrote under a uh, pen name, but of course, they found out and they fired him. So That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's stupid. Uh, that, then they added that... police security to the school. Oh, my goodness. That's ridiculous. Well, they have to cover their butts, right? I mean, uh, I guess they People just don't put... complain. Yeah. yeah, parents can be like, well, what if something happens? You knew he wrote it in a book. See, uh, having a, a wild imagination does not mean you're going to yeah. act upon those things or fantasize about those things. That's silly. That's, see, we've talked about, the, too, uh, the whole PC police and how it's ruining, you know, uh, the creative process for a lot of people. And just, you know, Every, even a simple feeling like journalism. Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. You know, it's like mm-hmm. you can't say, you can't express yourself freely because you're afraid you might offend someone or they might read into, you know, you have to write in a style that's, 
almost condescending, you know, and patronizing but because. But that's if you need someone to support your work. I mean, the internet's yeah. democratized everything, right? You can throw up a website and write whatever you want right now. I mean, uh, you're only guided, you know, you're only judged by the PC police if you need them to help you in your case or if you're part of a network or anything. So this is true. This do is what true. you want to do. But, you know, if you do want that fan support, all it takes is that one PC police, you know, person to, you know, get the wrong impression and spread that seed of doubt and ignorance, you know, because sadly, uh, negative stuff spreads faster than positive stuff, you know? Yeah. The, the bad people have, the trolls have more influence than the people that encourage and empower others. But anyway, that's the Internet for you. But anyways, on to better, bigger things. <laughs> exactly. So uh, let's do, let's do the introductions. So Stan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um... Or do you want me to do it? <laughs> you don't want to toot your own horn? No, man, I don't want to toot my own horn. Okay, I'll do it for you. You, you twisted my arm. Thank you. So Stan is a sci-fi uh, novelist and a former European Internet Advertising Bureau dude. That's a mouthful, bro. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. You could Google him at F A R Y N A. That's N as in Nancy. Farina. And Matt, of course, like I mentioned already, he's uh he joins us from ZombieCast podcast, which you can find at zombiecast.net and uh, allgames.com. Uh, they're live. Uh, what is it? Mondays at eight. Yeah. Yeah, Monday's eight o'clock. Yeah, I always confuse the time with uh, Knuckleballer Radio because they're at nine at Knuckleballer Radio on Sundays. You guys are Monday at eight, the earlier mm -hmm. time. Yeah, that that's Sean Freeman's other show. Sean is the granddaddy of ZombieCast, and he does two shows. And yeah, ZombieCast eight o'clock, and then Video Game Outsiders at nine o'clock on and Tuesdays. Uh, on Tuesdays, yeah. And that's over at AllGames.com, which you know they're, they're like our unofficial sister network for our geeky antics. So lots yeah, of over there. we share a lot of friends, and there's a lot of there's a lot of connections between the two. That's for sure. Yeah, we uh, we kind of like lend each other, we lend we lend personnel to each other's uh, shows and stuff. Yeah, it's it's very uh, I can't use that word on this podcast. <laughs> it's just very yeah. <laughs> I had the same issues. I'm like I don't want to <laughs> describe it that way. And no, it's just very, a lot of sharing goes on between people. That's good. I mean, the, the podcast community, once you dive into it, is very small. Um, if you have a podcast or a part of a podcast, odds are you've got connections to every other podcast going on right now. So that's good. It shares resources. Keep it tight. Yeah, exactly. Well, with the exception of maybe like the Wicked Radio Network, because they've like uh, yeah. claimed war against anyone that associates with allgames.com in any way. It's kind of petty. What's up yeah. with that? It's very petty. Oh, there's a whole backstory. But at this point in time, just do your own thing. Like, if you hate's too big to carry around in podcasting, just let it go. Everyone's just doing their thing. Everyone's just doing a passion, right? So just there's no reason to be that way. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, people doing what they what they love. You know, don't yeah. ruin their dream. There's enough negativity. You don't need to like you know add to it and create drama. It's it's. it's I don't know. People so need hobbies. It's decided too. Like there'll there'll be people who attack uh, Zombie Cast due to past griefs, and they won't even talk to me. And I'm like, I've been on Zombie Cast for a year and a half. Like, if you're gonna come after my podcast, at least throw me in the conversation. But the fact that they don't just makes me realize they haven't listened and they're not really up to date on stuff. Yeah, it's old grievances that they're uh, old beefs, man. Just let it drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, Stan, you got anything for us right now? Like you, <laughs> I'm a noob, man. Oh yeah, who am? My, what do you expect from me? I'm a noob. Oh yeah, who am I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Mar Lopez, aka Yo Gisela, founder of Geeky Antics that, and our sexy Latin lover. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, at least I tried. <laughs> now, by the way, I did not put him up to that. He wanted to say that. I did. I don't want people to think I'm a narcissist. Like... Share the show notes, sexy Latin lover. <laughs> I, I like you really reading that right like now. You. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, we're gonna derail so bad. I feel it. That's what that's what's all about. You know what? Technically, derailing is apropos for a Doctor Who episode or a Doctor Who podcast because Doctor Who derails all the time, doesn't it? Oh not? gosh, yes. That's we're the. I mean, that's the the theme. That's the charm of Doctor Who. Is there's tons of derailing, and you never know really what's going on. So. I think to pattern your podcast off of that is a very smart idea, Yogi, and congratulations. 
We did. That's why we're completely unscripted and unsegmented. <laughs> okay. Are we on page two or three of the uh, page right now? I, You know, I bounce around, man. I bounce around. <laughs> it's, it's really so, hard to follow. So stay. <laughs> it's like the TARDIS, you know. You don't know yeah. where it's going. <laughs> Bigger on the inside once you open it up, too. Yeah, that's true. You 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 know, sure. it's, you look at that one page cover and you're like, holy crap, it's much bigger on the inside. <laughs> Here's our show notes for ZombieCast. Show up, and talk. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we get off topic a lot. And I, I know Yogi's very m- more professional about it, so I respect that. Oh, yeah, well, it's something to that effect. <laughs> I just my biggest fear is that I respect it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Everybody's got their style, you know. But uh, yeah. Anyways, (laughs) well, Stan, Stan, Stan wanted me to ask for him that uh, he wanted me to ask to to see if he could furnish some sort of discount for a zombie research society. (laughs) Uh, Something about t-shirts and and vouchers. Ten minutes, you're already going for the freebies. Yeah, why not? Uh, I mean, Zombie Research Society is our partners, uh, I guess, technically, uh, Zombie uh, Cast. Yeah, if you yeah, watch yeah. The Walking Dead, and yeah, afterwards, there's the Talking Dead after show. There's a guy named Matt Moak who mm-hmm. sometimes does little segments. So he runs the Zombie Research Society. So Sean reached out to him, and now he comes on every week just to give us a few zombie tips. So that's what Stan's talking about. Um, as for the t shirt, dude, I haven't even gotten a t shirt, and I write for them. So Oh, that's terrible. I, that's not terrible. I, I haven't really asked. Uh, but they give, they have <laughs> you got to ask. Posts. You shouldn't have to ask. I Matt, shouldn't have to ask. Thank you. That's Thank true. You, but, you know, but see, I think Matt Moke is the kind of guy that's like, if you do ask him, he's like, sure, no problem. Like, he got he got the press pass for uh, for yeah, um, Ted yeah, no, on the spot. That, that's very, he, He's a very cool guy, and he did hook us up with, uh, or hooked up Ted with freebies. Yeah. So, you know what, Stan? Let me get into that relationship a little bit more. Uh, let me wine and dine a little bit, and I'll see what I can do. Sounds good, man. Yeah, plus you guys are the official podcast for the Zombie Research Society. That's that's you know that's not small potato stuff. It's you good, can, man. Yeah, you can ask for freebies. At least a you know at least a pen. You know. Yeah, you know what? Poop this. I'm gonna get some freebies after right after the show. I'm gonna email them. Be like, look, guys. Oh yeah. Time to pay up. <laughs> exactly. Do you know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> we got a machete. Yeah. Oh man. Well, you know. And those pens and those those pins that they have, they're like what five cents a pop. They get them ordered on you know on, in lots or penny. They get penny them out. Hey, you get your bunch a bunch of them. By the so, way, I just ordered five uh, baseball caps from them. The Zombie Research Society. Did you really? Yes, I did. That's awesome. Take a picture when you get one. I'd love to see what they look like. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, take a picture, send it to us, and um, we'll put it up on our website there. Cool. Look at that cross promotion right before yeah. your eyes. I love it. Has- it. So this is your first time uh, joining us for tea, or your beverage of choice. Um, right now I'm having uh, Kool-Aid of some sort. It's like an orange drink. What do you guys have anyway? Anything special? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? Okay, that's fun. I've got I'm, having, I'm having Coke and not rum. Ooh. We get together for, for tea time, and you can't even bring a, a good beverage. Shame on you. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally drinking water right now. I just went for a run. That works. That works. Water is good for you. Yeah, water is great. Mm. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. That's, as long as you bring some sort of beverage, that's good. That's that's the rule. Bring a, a beverage and good spirits. So anyway, if this is your first time joining us, uh, th- here's what we're doing. You know, we mainly talk uh, anything you know about Doctor Who, sci-fi, fantasy, zombies, end of the world, creativity. Uh, speak about, question, or think deep about. And we keep going to deep because that's kind of our recurring thing. Because everybody, every time people leave us comments now, it's like go deep. Go deeper! Is that, that's, that's kind of become our, our, our mantra, if not a, our slogan, unofficial slogan. Go deeper. You that's guys a little are... scary. <laughs> it's like we're, uh, it's like, like uh, there used to be an old game on the NES called Spelunker. Or no, not a Spelunker, uh, Load Runner, where the main thing about it was digging. And then Dig the... Dug. Oh, Dig Dug's a good one. That's a better, that's a better uh, metaphor. Mm. Uh, a better analogy, because we're comparing two things, yeah. Good one. Good call. Thanks, Taking it, take it way back. I love Dig Dug. That, that's, that game still holds up very well today. I don't know. They tried to do some remix a little while back. Uh, I don't know. Any game that has just a simple mechanic to it that you can perfect over time is, is holds up pretty well. You can yeah. add fancy graphics to it, but... Yeah. Yeah, so, so we're Dig Dug and Doctor Who is what you're saying. And other things, yes. Yeah, and other things. By the way, you guys could join us live at... Uh... 
my channel Yogizilla, where I simulcast. Uh, sometimes our uh, co-hosts will uh, simulcast as well. But the main place to go is the Geeky Antics channel on Twitch.tv. Uh, so let's see. So yeah, actually, some some interesting stuff happened uh, since the last time we did a show, which was only you know practically just two or three days ago, really. Yeah, because uh, we did on Sunday. So yeah. Uh, so you, YouTube, <laughs> in all their uh, their wisdom, uh, you know they automate everything. They uh, deleted one of our episodes off the off the site. Oh boo! No, we, was no, there no. some music in that or something like that? Or? No, no copyrighted material. I made sure that I, when I highlighted it off of Twitch, that I removed it. Uh, mm -hmm. There was nothing really that I could think of. And then they, then when I checked to see what the infraction was, or the alleged infraction, they said. Oh, uh, gaming views. I'm like, what? What? What does that even mean? So, you know, there's people that buy fans or <laughs> they post links in, or content in misleading ways. So, this, you know, they'll do stuff like um, naked boobies. And then you click on it and it's like, it's nothing to do with that. But people do that on mm. YouTube all the time. There's, there's established big, big YouTubers that do that all the time to get, yeah, that's to get views. Tagging. That's marketing. That's been going on since the dawn of time. Yeah, and they they take it to an extreme, like false advertising, like crazy. Like click the click here for for free. Um, I don't know, hug. Oh, you know? I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then it's like, there's no free hug. Where's my free hug? You lied to me. A free hug ad. Yeah, but we didn't do anything of the sort. But apparently, some of our fans who were yes, clickbaiting is, is that's one of the things they were saying that that was included in the overall. You know, infraction category of uh, gaming views is clickbaiting and um, invisible links and redirecting links and buying sure. fans. There's a lot of stuff you could do that's, you know, this gray area or completely frowned down up, up, upon. But they don't always enforce it. They just decided to enforce it because I guess we gained so much traction out of nowhere. They saw that it was a red flag. It's like, wow, you guys are getting a lot of a lot of traffic and you don't usually get this kind of traffic. And most of our videos, they get, you know, we don't push YouTube that hard because it's so restrictive. Mm -hmm. That you know, most of our videos maybe get fifty to one hundred views. You know, it's decent, it's better than most people, but you know, we don't push it that hard. And we were getting like thousands of views and likes, oh. and you know, apparently some of our fans they meant well, and they were like buying links or whatever they were doing, some SC, some like kind of like black hat SEO stuff. I don't know what was going on, but we got blamed for it, and they and they deleted the uh, the, the the content. I had to appeal to it. They write back to me and they say. Um, uh, even though we were right in our decision, after further research, we insist that we were correct in our decision. We're going to reinstate the video under a different link. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, you know, you, we were right. You're, you know, screw you. Uh, but here's, we're going to do you a favor. But if you break the rule again, you, you might get suspended. Just so let you, you know. You got a slap on the wrist, basically. Yeah, but basically it's like a one strike thing. If I, if, if something else happens, if the same infraction happens again, they can suspend us. Which is stupid. To All suspend right. the whole channel. <laughs> that is kind of stupid. But it won't happen. It well, won't happen. We're, we're going to be extra careful. But, you know, if you're... So we have to tell our fans. Yeah, we have to tell our fans. We yeah. love love, but we don't need that kind of love. Yeah. So, Come tell, by it honestly. We want to do it honestly. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, tell your friends. Maybe tag some of your friends on Facebook or Twitter if you think that this is something they'd like to listen to. But don't do anything shady, you know, no link farms or uh, pyramid schemes or anything that could come back to us somehow. Uh, we do not sanction that kind of stuff. And Google, I hope you're listening to that, even though I did not. I mean, it's all automated. And when they feel like it, then they, <laughs> then they actually write you a message that's as, as snooty as heck. <sighs> all right, I had to okay, get that out. Me. I had I to know. get it, it. It hurt my feelings, kid. We finally hit 100 subscribers. That's kind of a milestone for, for YouTubers. 100 subscribers is a big deal. That's pretty damn good, man. Yeah, you know, and we're, we're getting real momentum because the Doctor Who community is awesome. You yes, Whoians are. are fantastic. We did not expect this much uh, traction so soon. So that's why we're trying to get as many of our friends on here and, you know, uh, and, make, and, and record bonus episodes like we're doing today because we want to keep the momentum going and, and share the love with everybody. This is, I'm, I'm super excited. How about you guys? Yes. Yeah, whatever. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, good old Matt. But good I. Old Matt. So as far as community goes, uh, we're gonna be doing virtual meetups. Um, the best place to probably go right now for that is uh, geekyantics.net. You can subscribe to our mailing list on there, 
And you could also go to our forums. And I know forums are not necessarily the most user-friendly thing. But if you could go on there, we have some threads with uh, announcements, uh, what we're going to do, uh, places where you could share your schedule and availability so we could do uh, group viewing sessions of different Doctor Who episodes, including uh, the Day of the Doctor episode, which is the 50th anniversary episode of Doctor Who, and the maybe, if we could stomach it, the 1996 uh, Doctor Who reboot, which was a straight-to-TV movie with Paul McGann in it. I love you. I'm not watching a show with you. I, <laughs> I, 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 I barely let Mariana talk when we watch an episode. I'm not going to let people. No, sorry. But I will, you know what? Skype me in. Just mute the audio and I can like be there in spirit. How about that? Okay. All right. There you go. I'm just, I'm very curmudgeon. I'm an only child. I enjoy, I my, enter- I enjoy I my entertainment solo. And you know, and, and, and I think uh, we could all uh, appreciate that introverted behavior. Uh, it's very introverted. I know. I'm sorry. Um, but you know, this, this is, is an opportunity to do uh, commentary like a mystery science theater. Exactly. Oh no! Don't get me wrong. Uh-huh. You guys are you guys are gonna tear this. I, like it'll be fun for people who aren't curmudgeon like me. Like do this. You guys are gonna have a great time. That's gonna be awesome. I just I I wouldn't add to it. So I'll catch you on the other side if that's all right. Zombie boy is in the chat. By the way, uh, one of our biggest supporters. He's, He's like, zombie. Doctor Who? Question, question? <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. That joke never gets old. Someone spelled Doctor Who with a D-R period the other day, and I, like, lost it on them. <laughs> oh, actual, gosh. I think I'm an actual Doctor Who fan now. Yes, so you like, are. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, you can't abbreviate it. Unless you're on Twitter. You know, that, that character limit limits you quite a bit. It, it, it's it, a name. It's a yeah. Name. yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, like, reduce your name to like a ye like a y and an i like your name is yogi like i'm gonna have to find other ways to make up those letters i think <laughs> the Z- zombie uh, says in the chat uh pre- please don't spoil so we keep it pretty spoiler light when we do have some spoilers coming up we'll try to give you a heads up so you can skip ahead or mute for a little bit yeah he's uh he's behind too uh matt you see that you're not the only yeah. one that's a little behind it's okay zombie over zombie 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 vor Zombie Vore. It's okay. That's a good one. I like that. It's okay, Zombie Vore. I've only watched the first episode, so I'm in the same boat. Yeah, well, well, in this episode, we're going to probably look more at the... So Actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's talk about what's gonna, what we're going to try to tackle in this jam-packed edition of mm-hmm. uh, Timey Wimey Tea Time. We're going to do a little bit of creative writing, uh, talking and discussion, maybe a little debate. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about... Um, Doctor Who around the world, viewership by country and language. Just a little quick sidebar there. Then, you know, for the newer fans, for people that maybe are listening and never have checked out Doctor Who, we'll talk about what Doctor Who is. A little quick, you know, a little crash course in Doctor Who. And uh, then we'll read some uh, YouTube comments. We have some really interesting comments in there. And that's, this is our bilingual segment. There's, there's some Spanish stuff in there, amongst other languages. We have voicemails. Very, in- very interesting voice. That's going to be one of the highlights of tonight. And uh, then we'll talk a little bit about uh, season eight so far, um, or series eight if you want to be if you want to be proper, and maybe some light episode two uh, recap and analysis. That's that's part of it. And you know, one of the big things is uh, who who's this Missy character that they keep uh, putting in there, kind of shoehorning here. It's kind of almost shoehorned in, but maybe not. I don't know. We'll get to that. Sounds good, guys? Sounds great. I'll probably take off when you talk about episode two, if that's all right, because I'm going to watch that tonight. Yeah, that'd be, so the, actually, the timing, yeah. by the time we get to that, the timing mm-hmm. probably be perfect. So. Okay. So we're going to, yeah. It could not have worked out better. We had Sweet. the little 15, we had like the 15-minute pre-show <laughs> and yeah. almost went off on a deep end just talking about River Song. I'm glad I'm not alone because I'm telling you, I I, I got in such a hard time from people for not being completely ecstatic about her. Like, I liked her, but I just felt like she was out of place. That's all. I liked her in the introduction when we were first introduced to her. Um, It seemed after that the writers said, we got to do something with this character. Because if you watch her from, like, the first episode you see her to the last, it's a very different character. Like, she went from, like, timid research, not timid, but... It's kind of strong-headed research scientist to Indiana Jones-esque, you know, 
uh, Saturday morning cartoony character. And I don't think I was totally down with that entire transformation. I think I think she got boosted up a lot. And that, that whole anyways, I think we're derailing a little bit. But the the whole relationship with her and Doctor Who just had me asking every qu- every episode, like, does this make sense that this could actually happen? You know what I mean? Like, it seems like way too it opened up way too many plot holes. Yeah, like why why she couldn't warn him about a ton of stuff that was going to happen or whatnot. I don't know. Yeah, I think they reached. So you know, let's talk about that. As you know, as writers, this is our little kind of our little writers uh, mini panel. Let's call it. I mean, it's not really official segment, but not even mentioned this challenge that writers have. I think it's the perfect time to talk about this. You know, one mm. challenge that we have as writers, especially if you know doing fictional work, is perhaps overreaching, right? Mm-hmm. And I think uh, Stephen Moffat has this kind of issue where he does a lot of exposition and he almost shoehorns stuff in. He forces things in there that take away from the main content, mm-hmm. right? So, so to, to, to me, to, you know, tell me what you guys think first before we get into that. Doctor Who. One of the special things about it is that even though there's underlying themes and story arcs. It's very episodic. You can enjoy each episode on its own, right? It never, fe- it usually doesn't feel like there's stuff that's really out of place, right? They might hint at stuff, but it's not like, wow, half of that episode did not have to be there. It had nothing to do with anything else. But we're seeing now, as you know, season, series eight, it, it, it feels like they're throwing a lot of stuff at us, and it doesn't really belong. Am I wrong in this? Do you guys feel the same thing so far? It's a challenging uh, thing. I mean, as a writer for me, so it's what I call the the nestling boxes uh, problem. I mean, you're trying to fit in, so you have one story, and you're trying to fit in multiple other stories that go across several episodes, and maybe across a year, or maybe across many years, and it's hard to keep it, to juggle it, to keep it balanced, because you still ultimately have to make the story compelling right now. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. And it's hard to do that. It is hard to do that. I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of story arcs that last a season as long as they're done well. That's Some of my favorite shows do that really well. And I'm trying to think of shows that balance that monster of the week with a gigantic storyline. And, you know, like Fringe did it well, I thought. Um what else do we watch? Uh, Breaking Bad obviously was one gigantic story arc. But I want to stop you right. I want to stop you right there though. Fringe, yeah, yeah, is an awesome show. But could you go back and rewatch Fringe episodes like you could Doctor Who? I think you absolutely could because I mean, what Fringe did in the last season there is they tied everything together, right? Um, mm-hmm. All the all the old cases from the first couple seasons came into play because they went back to those people and, and used those technologies and those those talents and those skills. Uh, whether or not they meant to do that from the beginning is different, but uh, that was an intelligent way of doing it. I think in Doctor Who, you can it, it goes two ways sometimes. Like Bad Wolf was a fantastic way of kind of linking everything without being too intrusive. Whereas I find a lot of the seasons it'll almost feel like Moffat and his crew are going, oh, crap, we need, an, we need something gigantic to end the season off with. Let's start, like, planting really obvious clues in the episode and then get to the last episode. In the last 15 minutes, the Doctor will think of something completely out of left field and solve it, and that'll be it. So I think if you're going to plant those seeds, you have to have a satisfying payoff. And Doctor Who sometimes misses the boat on that. You'll get to the last season or the last episode, you'll think it's going to be some really smart solution to it, and it's just like, oh, he's gonna point his, uh, he's gonna point his uh, remote thingy, and it's gonna fix it all up, <laughs> right? Sonic screwdriver, like I mean, but the, the Deus Ex Machina is yeah. Doctor Who. I mean, that's what it's all about. So I think you got to get over that as well. Yeah, we could definitely. I think for anyone that's that's followed Doctor Who for any amount of time, we're kind of used to those, you know, the Batman utility belt approach to fixing things. That's not so yeah. bad. But I agree. I I feel like when you start planting those seeds and making them very overt, like the, the subtlety has gone completely out the window. Uh, it, it's been left, you know, several countries behind at this point. Yeah. Uh. So and and I feel like part of that, with as far as Moffat is concerned, is Russell T Davies is not there to balance him out with the different mm-hmm. stories. So he, as as a showrunner. 
by himself, Stephen Moffat, I think, has gotten a little lax and is overreaching in, in that aspect. Cause he plants the seeds, and I agree, sometimes he doesn't, um, you know, really say, I don't know. He doesn't well, satisfy it the, us. It gets to the point where those seeds have to grow, and then he kind of just, it's a very kind of weak punch at the end. Like this new, <laughs> yeah. char- this new character we're, we're being introduced to, this woman that uh, purports to be the doctor's wife or girlfriend or whatever yes sir. um yeah it's like here's the thing that's gonna be hinted at for the next what 10 12 episodes and more likely than not in the last episode there's gonna be something where she appears for the last 10 minutes and gets solved so that payoff is not gonna be as great i'm hoping it's better but that's to me is why i love doctor who for the week to week episodes because i've given up on trying to get really too excited about the overarching stuff Right, so like that's exactly what I was saying is like episodic. You know, you want that that episode itself to be satisfying on its own, and mm-hmm. then if there's something, there's a bonus like this, there's connections, there's puzzle pieces that fit as a result of watching each of those episodes. Then that's satisfying. But, but here's the thing: Are we not satisfied with the seeds that are planted and then the ultimate payoff because our expectations can never be met? Like our maybe as creatives, maybe our imagination. I'm playing devil's advocate, of course. That's a good point. It's a good point. Maybe our ex- expectations are never going to be met because we have a much wilder imagination, right? Could that be yeah. it? I don't know. Stan, what do you think? You're, you're you're more of a writer than I am in terms of creative stuff. Well, I think what you said. Um... The payoff has to be huge yeah. um, for our patients. So, you know, maybe uh, devote the Christmas extra episode to, you know, some big reward. Well, they I'm don't do think, that. Yeah. And they, they really don't. The Christmas episodes are very throwaway, I find. They're still it, it, fantastically entertaining, but I'm trying to think of shows that have done that really well. Um, True Detective, in a sense, did that really well by planting seeds, and there was a kind of a cool payoff at the end. But in terms of sci-fi shows, um, like Star Trek never really did that, except, I guess, kind of with Q. Sorry, guys. No worries. <laughs> I thought I had that on mute. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to th- um, Walking Dead kind of is good with that, planting yeah. some stuff that pays off in the end. The whole uh, Terminus thing from last season uh, was yeah, really that good. Yeah, out. That yeah, very nice. so it, it can happen and it can pay off, but I think just with Doctor Who, it, it's I, first. I love the story. I know I'm, I know I sound down on the show, but I love Doctor Who. But I think the weakness is that it, it always tries to build to some epic conclusion, and that epic conclusion is always the Doctor figures it out in the last five minutes, and so you're kind of left going, Ugh, like I thought this was going to be smarter, or yeah. a little more beneficial at the end. That's probably the big difference between the 2005 uh, revival. I, I hate to call it a reboot because it's not a reboot. There's continuity and everything is kind of pretty much canon as far as the TV series go. Mm-hmm. But in, the thing is, with between the older stuff, especially Tom Baker um, and John Petru, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the older stuff, they, they, they've had a good way of have you some resolution and, and some, something, a good takeaway for each episode, but they also gave themselves enough time to finish out each story properly, not rush it. You know, right. like that, that five minute, 15 minute solution. It's like, you know, all this build up for, oh, I had the solution all the time in my pocket, <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. And here's a great example, guys. I don't remember uh, Matt's, I think it was Matt Smith's first season, the whole crack in uh, the space time continuum thing and the TARDIS blowing up. Uh, spoilers, there's crack in the space-time continuum. <laughs> the TARDIS blows up. Um, but did that, looking back on that, did that make any sense in the end? Because uh, that was every every show they seemed to try to tie it in. And at the very end, there was just some weird explanation or some very last-minute solution to it. And you're like, oh, I don't even know what that whole thing was about. Do you remember that? Yes, absolutely. You discovered a crack so in I don't the... Know. Does the Christmas story tie that up sufficiently? Right. So the crack saves him. Gives them the extra regeneration, I but guess so. is yeah. that satisfying? Seem yeah, but it seemed eh. very it seemed very writery kind of. Uh, we need a solution. Like let's just it was explain arbitrary. this away. Yes. Yeah. So that yeah, I think that yeah, Stan, that's what I'm talking about. Like, seems sometimes with the show, it's just like we're just gonna explain it away, and it it's not a satisfying explanation. <laughs> well, see, so uh... I, hope, yeah. I hope this woman pays off. Is my long rambling way of saying that. 
no, I, I want this to be I want this to be a good payoff. Well, I think that the crack may be a good example just because it was something that was consistently shown all every step of the way pretty much. And it didn't take away from the main subject matter, the same the, the main story being told in each episode. But you know, it did create that intrigue and the payoff in the end was good enough because you know, spoilers, the uh, you know, uh the Time Lords are still alive, right? That's kind mm-hmm. of a big deal. I mean that's 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 something I thought they were always alive though. Wasn't that canon? Like when that big reveal happened where um his home world is still alive, they're just locked in a time loop. I thought that was established like decades ago. Yes, but then with the two thousand five series they came in with the you know, Eccleston came in with the backdrop of the War Doctor having destroyed Gallifrey or th- or so he thought. And they were lost uh-huh. forever. Uh-huh. So you know, when with with when we talked about this too, that the kind of evolution of the different doctors. So Eccleston Doctor was, you know, more serious, kind of stoic at times, but he had the silly smile to break that up. Um, then David Tennant was more of like the the emotional, the sentimental Doctor, because I feel like the, the turmoil of him finally realizing what he had done, remembering everything finally, because uh, you know, there's a little bit of memory loss with each each re- regeneration. So I right. think it finally hit him, and then he was kind of uh, remorseful. And then finally, Matt Smith was kind of like the silly doctor. That was like, well, this sucks. I'm going to try to mask my pain with silliness. But eventually, I'm going to get down to business. I mean, yeah. that's kind of how I feel They, they it's, it's progressed. And now we're getting back to, like, what could be a serious doctor. And a, as Stan likes to say, the dangerous doctor. <laughs> he does have the gravitas around him. I, um, I watched the entire last five seasons completely thinking that Gallifrey was still around. Like, I did, maybe I missed that in the first season, but... So when that happened, I was like, yeah, of course it's still there. Why is everyone surprised about this? I thought the Doctor knew that from the start. So that's a key piece of information I didn't know about in this yeah. Uh, revival. Yeah. I mean, they, that's, that's the underlying theme. That's the story arc that they, draw, they had drawn out for, gosh, seven seasons. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, gosh, I did seven, seven years waiting for that to get resolution. Or actually eight, because there was a brief hiatus somewhere in between there. Here right, and there. right. So... Eight years, pretty much, to get that completely resolved. And, you know, with the 50th anniversary, uh, you know, the uh, Day of the Doctor episode, that that was very satisfying. And I I hope that restored everybody's faith if they didn't have any faith by then. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, come on, that was an awesome episode. Yeah, I know. It was good. It was good. It was good. Good, good. It was good. The 50th 50th did it for me. I mean, I was starting to lose faith because, I don't know. Because the story was getting a little bit too, mm, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to say. Um, Do you think- cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good word for it. <laughs> so, and I'm, I'm an old Doctor fan, mm-hmm. so I go way back. So the new Doctor was still, you know, I wasn't sure about it, but the 50th helped me uh, confirm my commitment. Right on. So yeah, we we were gonna talk about just writing in general, but it always comes back to Doctor Who. We can't avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that what we will uh, say that, that um, pacing is another big thing as a writer. And back to Doctor Who. What, what do you guys think about the pacing so far on, on on Series Eight? Is it going faster than previous seasons? Does it seem slower? Is it just right? Any thoughts? Too slow for me. Too slow for you? Yeah, I mean, that the first episode was dragging so hard. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it really was. We were talking about this before the episode. Um, at, that first episode is an hour and 16 minutes. It could have been a half hour. Uh, there, is, there is a lot, and Stan, I, you're the writer in the room, but there's a lot of scenes where I felt they're try, they're just spending far too much time just going in a circular loop of dialogue, uh, you know, <laughs> where they were just explaining the same concepts over and over and over again, especially when the doctor's having that final confrontation in the floating restaurant with, like, a giant skin balloon over them. And it's just, it, it just felt to me like I could have skipped ahead five minutes and be no, I wouldn't have lost any information. It just seemed like just talking for no purpose other than to fill in the time. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. It That's just how it felt to me. Out. It felt off for sure. The conversation didn't even build up to that monumental 
not knowing moment of did the doctor push him or not. It didn't build up to that. No, yeah. no, not at all. Did the doctor push him? Are we? What are we thinking? Hmm. Did he? Did he break his basic programming? His code of honor. His code of honor. His Batman code of honor. <laughs> See, I don't want to answer that too much because, uh, yeah. I mean, episode two. We're trying not to get too deep into it. I mean, you're not caught up, but yeah. Um. You know. Uh, yeah, I, I think he is a dangerous doctor, and I think he's lost quite a bit of himself. For whatever mm-hmm. reason, whether it's memory loss or he's cha- he's taking a different path, or maybe he's being influenced in some manner. You know, again, Missy is she some kind of is she pulling strings somehow? Mm. I'm I, you know that's my hope is that they keep bringing Missy and they keep doing these like almost side stories within the episode. You know, five to fifteen minutes of introducing characters that seem like they have nothing to do with anything. You yeah. know, because they they're gonna bring bring them all together. It's gonna be a, some kind of massive call, but I don't know. There's potential well, here's, there. Yeah. Here's a here's an example of pacing I felt was off with this episode, or the first one, anyways. There's that part where he's uh, interacting with a homeless guy in the alley. Um, that could have that could should have been like a one two minute scene max, but totally there was there was just some weird banter going back and forth. <laughs> And it, it gave nothing to the show other than to be like, look, the doctor's being goofy again. But we know the doctor's being goofy. We've known that for 50 years. We don't need another scene with him being goofy for eight minutes. It's So it just it felt off. It seemed like the, the beginning was rushed. And it seemed like it just took its sweet-ass time on other scenes. So maybe it's maybe they're trying to go for a manic sense. I don't know. It just, it, it just didn't jive with me. And that's why it took me a long time to actually go, come back to the episode. Because I got back, I got up to that that scene with the homeless man. I'm like, I just, I don't know what I'm watching anymore. I, nothing's progressed. I'm just, <laughs> and then I watched the rest of it today. I'm like, okay, I'm glad I did. Cause I, it was a cool little twist on the story, but the pacing does seem a little off. That's for sure. I don't know. My phone's possessed today for some reason. It's muted and it's still sounding off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to throw it in a corner somewhere. About to throw. No. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that scene, is because they wanted to make sure you caught one very important piece of information, which I, I think a lot of people missed. Mm-hmm. He it's traded. Very... You, you, you want to say Stan? No, you go for it. No, you, you go for it. You go for it. No, yeah. man, you're you're the man. But you got the Stan. <laughs> you get the Stan voice. They don't want to listen to my voice. The the the, the community has already yeah. they commented. They, they, you don't want the sexy voice, bro. Okay, so he traded his watch for the coat. The watch that holds his memories. Uh, so he, he never does a regeneration well when there's no watch. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I didn't catch that. Nicely done. So zombie uh, Vord makes a good point too. You know, maybe they they do they they stretched everything out just so that this new Doctor Who follows finally jumping on board. They have enough content to latch on to. That's a good point too. I don't know if that was content, though, that they were using to stretch out, though. It just, like, it felt it felt like the writers were like, let's just have him rambling for a long time. <laughs> like, it's not like he stood there and, like, recounted the Doctor's history. It's, it's, most of those scenes were just, you know, look how zany I am and how, yeah. I, 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 how I can't, I, I don't know what I'm doing right now. And then when they got to the restaurant, that's when things kind of picked up. Like, oh, okay, we actually have a plot this episode. That's fantastic. And then... <laughs> Then then it got interesting and then it slowed down a little bit at points too. But well, that was yeah, a brilliant. I mean, that was a brilliant scene too. I mean, when the the, the tension they scene. they created there, when you yeah. know when they finally realized what was going on, that that, that was really well done. That so was yeah, classic it, Doctor Who. That was great. That was that was you know discovery. That was mystery. That was like oh something really crazy is going on. Yeah, that was perfect Doctor Who for sure. But it took them that long to get to. It. I, I definitely see that point. You know, I think that they're also focusing a lot on the the dialogue because Peter Capaldi, as the Doctor, he's not a, 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 he's not like these other younger Doctors we, we've gotten used to with the new series. He's more uh, he's less of a physical Doctor. Is that fair to that's, say? That's so true. I feel that trying to for us older fans. You know, they've been gotten used, or maybe just people that gotten used to, you know, David Tennant and Matt Smith. 
They're like, he's not as physical. He's actually a lot of his scenes, he's kind of stationary. So right. they want to show what he, what to expect from that. So as a, for, for the first episode, I can of understand all the exposition and, and teasing and kind of reconditioning us. Uh, but then if if they keep doing too much of that, you know, for the next couple of episodes, then I start worrying, you know, because mm. mm. we've already been retrained. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, moving on, cause we're about to talk about, you know, for those that don't know what Doctor Who is, and you know, we want to make sure you guys understand why we're so excited about it. So that was a little bit of writing behind the talk, behind the scenes talk and a little creative insight into what we see as issues. You know, I will say the, like, one last thing about just the creative process when, you know, you're writing and, you know, doing storytelling. I think pacing is, has become more important than ever because, you know, let's face it, you know, with the way social media has evolved or devolved, depending how you look at it, uh, people have shorter attention spans. They want instant gratification. And <laughs> if you're not delivering, you know... Quickly, I mean, vines are six six second videos. That's how bad our world has gotten. That if anything's longer than six seconds, it's like, ah, oh, this is a, such a long video. <laughs> really, the, ten seconds? Stop it, bro. <laughs> I don't think so. Cause I, again, going back to Breaking Bad, you could have scenes in that thing that last twenty minutes, but there's a sense of build. There's a sense of like, there's a purpose to this scene. Uh, I think that's the main distinction. Is that, um. You know, if the scene doesn't have a purpose, just talking to hear people talk isn't going to keep people interested. And I'm not saying that's what Doctor Who does. I'm just saying, like, that's, I think, the main distinction. But that was a pretty fast-paced show, though, you know, if you look at it. Yeah, but they also had, like, a lot of, like, things where you're just hooked. A lot of times where the camera didn't move and people are just talking, you're just absolutely hooked because the dialogue was leading somewhere. Well, that's still pacing because it's still major thing major major events turning out right but in doctor who or breaking bad no in breaking bad breaking bad yeah yeah that's a, breaking bad i thought was a good example of that um, yeah and I'm, I'm i'm not pooping over doctor who i think it's a fantastic show i just um maybe i hadn't seen it in a while but this last episode seemed a little too much like if there were dialogue scenes it was just a lot of the same information repeated over and over again yeah. and it just seemed to get everyone having a line like have make sure everyone has a line right I, feel, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I felt the same way initially, and then I, after rewatching the episode a few times, I'm actually enjoying it more and, and, and catching additional things. So I think, cool. this, yeah. I think this is going to be that kind of season where you really have to watch, the, you know, focus and rewatch the episodes, and you'll appreciate different things each, each viewing, and it'll grow on you and it'll get even better, because they are dropping a lot of hints. It's, again, some of them are not subtle at all, and if you miss those things, those little nuggets you'll feel like, okay, I, I, I have a feeling by the music that I should be excited right now, but why don't <laughs> I feel excited? Yeah. It's kind of that situation. But let, let's move on because I wanted to share quick, uh, some quick tidbits. You know, you know, we're 50 plus years of Doctor Who in, and uh, we were really amazed because a lot of the people that have been giving us feedback, leaving us comments, uh, leaving voicemails are from countries that we normally would not think are big on Doctor Who as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Spanish-speaking countries and so I, I try to look into this, some of the data, and I, I could only find, like, one real good thing on brandwatch.com. It does um, – it has a little Doctor Who section, and they talk about the global chatter on, do on the Doctor. And I won't take too much time on this because this is marketing stuff, and most people don't really care about it. But it's, in it's interesting. <laughs> you would not – you be you might be surprised to see what kind of breakdown there is as far as the people talking, having conversations about Doctor Who and the actual viewership. So check this out. Well, what would you what would you think is the number one country as far as uh, Doctor Who fans and people just constantly talking about Doctor Who, having conversations about Doctor Who? Jeez, U.S. Yeah, Stan. or the U.K. Stan must have looked at this already. <laughs> I thought it would be the U.K. But I mean, we'd we, assume, yeah. But we do have more people. But still, yeah. I, like I like in my circles here in the states, I don't know many people that like Doctor Who. Yeah, but it is the U.S. Uh, the the U.S. Uh, out of uh, as far as percentage wise, total global chatter, they're at sixty three percent. Well, as of like last year, uh, oh, wow. I, I haven't looked at the updated stuff. This is like November of last year. So U U.S. was at sixty sixty three percent of the total uh, global chatter on do on the Doctor. The U.K. was twenty nine percent. Australia is at two. Canada's at four. Um, 
New Zealand's at point three, and then there's then that they don't really show much more after that. It's weird. Oh, and Ireland, Ireland is at one percent. Huh. So that 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 just shocked me because if you know, and this is not reflecting in my personal experiences at all because. Like half of our comments on our on our uh, YouTube videos for Timey Wimey Tea Time are are in Spanish, huh. but the the, the Spanish speaking countries are not re- represented in here at all, <laughs> <laughs> which is strange. But you know, the other thing about our Spanish comments is, wow, there's a quality there. There's an intelligence there that <laughs> makes me embarrassed <laughs> to be an American. <laughs> Because they say some amazing things. They do. We have a very, stuff. yeah, we have a very, uh, you know, and I'm not, and this is completely coming from the bottom of my heart. I mean, we have probably the most beautiful and compassionate and just deep fans I've ever seen in any community on this show. It's crazy. Uh, sometimes I'm like, wow, how, how can we uh, follow that up? <laughs> <laughs> So I hope we're satisfied. But here's another fun fact. Uh, what was the number I saw? Um, I, I saw a, a record. If I'm, and I'm pulling this off the top of my head because I don't have it in front of me. But I remember reading somewhere that the 50, 50th anniversary episode, uh, Day of the Doctor, um, was the biggest simulcasted TV event ever. It broke records, like Guinness World Records. Oh, wow. And I think it was, I believe, don't hold me to this, guys, but I believe it was simulcasted at, uh, in 44 different countries. Holy crap. That's crazy. That's but great. Even, That's, yeah. Wow. But even with that, I still feel like Doctor Who isn't very mainstream. Like, it still feels like a niche thing. Like, there's very much cult following. There's little pockets here and there, no matter where you go. You know what I mean? It's not Walking Dead. No. <laughs> <laughs> never I mean, every, everyone can well maybe the thing is is that anyone can talk about the walking dead but not everyone can talk intelligently about doctor who yeah yeah and it's you know and it's also it's a smart show that doesn't speak down to the fans like everybody can appreciate it for different reasons like you don't mm-hmm. feel like it's talking down to you and making and belittling you like you know, it, it, you don't have to be the super high I, IQ to enjoy the show, but if you do high, have a high IQ, then you enjoy it for other reasons. And that's what's brilliant about it. There's not many shows you can say that that are like that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Stan, I think you should take this next section, because I've done a lot of talking. But you talk so well. <laughs> I see he's trying to he's trying to pawn it okay. off at me. I see. Yeah, I'm <laughs> the uh, silent bomb. <laughs> I'm not allowing you to. I'm pulling you back into this. All right, fine. So, what is Doctor Who? Who is who? Because there's people listening to our podcast here that uh, have no idea what we're talking about. They're just loving us. Doctor Who is a 50-year-plus BBC sci-fi TV series about this alien guy. Who has different faces. He travels time and space with a little help from his mostly earthly companions. And uh, that's all I'm saying, man. You, you take it from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works. It's a nice little, yeah. Yeah, I think, that's, I, think, I think that's good enough. We don't need to do anything else. But I will say this, that every, one of the things, another thing is, I think the whole time we've kind of covered, we always kind of end up talking about what we love about the show. Like we said, that we, that you could go back to it and revisit episodes and enjoy them again and again and catch new things each time. Um, and another thing that's special about it is that everyone has their own favorite doctor, no matter when they got into the show. And it's, it's rare you get people to agree on which doctors are like, and if they do, they they like those doctors for different reasons. So you know, we're asking everybody, you know, who's your favorite? You know, you should let us know. We, we we love to hear those stories, and you know, maybe you could tell us about your your uh, your first experience with Doctor Who, your your favorite moment, maybe. Uh, send us those uh those uh, testimonials, those intimate Doctor Who experiences. Our, our voicemail line is two zero six four one five four nine eight seven, and we're actually about to play. A couple of those voicemails. Are you guys are you guys ready for this? Well, I want to ask Matt something. All right. Who's your favorite doctor? Oh, 
Stan, Sorry. I'm probably I'm gonna tick you off, Stan. I, <laughs> I am. I know I am because you're an old Doctor Who fan, and I know. Uh, okay, it's Matt Smith, <laughs> only because I just monkey I loved, boy from outer space. Uh, yeah, you know what? I loved his mannerisms. I just love the physicality of of uh, what he did with it, and he made it really fun, uh, and he he fit the campiness of the show. I thought so. I don't know. I, did, I was more in pure entertainment basis. I love Matt Smith as the doctor. That's so, fair. Yeah, it's it is. It's fair to an extent. I, I, I haven't watched as many old Doctor Who. I'd probably change my opinion. So well, who's yours? Maybe not. Well, Maybe. you know, I like Tom Baker. Um, yeah. But, you know, when we go back uh, before the so-called reboot, uh, the doctor is darker and the situation is uh, desperate. So it's a different feeling. So if you're talking about Matt Smith, you know, who's uh, lighthearted. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a lot of fun. Um, I don't know if the older doctors are a lot of fun. They can be in a dark, sarcastic uh, way. Mm -hmm. You know, that reminds you of uh, Pink Floyd's complaint. <laughs> <laughs> no dark sarcasm in the classroom. You know? That's right. That's right. Um Capaldi, like, he could be my favorite doctor. He's, he's got a lot of potential. Only be, like, first of all, he's, what did he say? He patterned his look off of David Bowie. And David Bowie is, like, my all-time favorite musician. And he is bringing it back a little more serious and dark. So he's poised to be my favorite. Like, I'm just, I'm really hoping he can kind of Step put up. up to the job. <laughs> Step up to, yeah. And, and, you know, it's a lot of it's writing, but, right. um they got to give him the right situations. They can't just put him in the same Matt Smith situations. They got to give him stuff that's going to appeal to his doctor, right? Right. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. So far, they're not really setting him up for success. They're not writing him that well, like playing up his strengths. Um, I, th I think that if you want whimsy and physical acting, uh, Peter Capaldi is not really your man. I mean, he has a, he, he has range. It's just, don't expect him to be Matt Smith. You can't make him into Matt Smith or even David yeah. Tennant at that. Yeah, there was a scene like in the first one where he was riding that elevator. He was holding on and just like, oh, this is so awkward to watch. Like, you could just, it just didn't feel like what that character would be doing. Like, remember he was riding the elevator up because the bad guy was getting away? Sorry, spoilers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was a little interesting. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, King Demon in the chat says, uh, I can't say I liked a lot of them. Uh, the ninth was dark and bad. Oh, bad A. We know what that means. We can, we can, say, uh, we can say badass. That's fine. Whoa. They say that on, on, on public television all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and as is a, don is a donkey, kids, of course. Yeah. The tenth was uh, the man. And then, the, then Matt sneaks up on you, and then he's gone. <laughs> it, does, it did kind of feel that way. Yeah. He he grows on you. When I first saw him, like oh, this guy's way too goofy for his own good. Ah, he just grew on me. I, I you know I felt the same way. I, I, at first I looked at him. I said he looks like a monkey. He looks like a Neanderthal. Oh, I don't know. And I felt I felt bad because I was prejudging, and I'm, that's not the kind of person I am. But mm -hmm. ah, he 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 found a special place in my heart for sure. Yeah, and I agree. His was, mannerisms definitely are cool. He was dark though, if you remember. Like there was like towards the end, he came more across as just like. A really kind of manic, depressed person, rather than a goofball. Like, like he was dealing with a lot of stuff, and he was just like you said, masking it with uh, being a goofy guy. Yep, yep. That, that's that's what I love about it. And 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 you could definitely, if you watch all this the episodes, you know, back to back or enough of them back to back, you actually see like the goofiness gets toned down a little bit, and then the the you can feel like the emotional burden. And they did a really good job with that, and. Uh, He's a big, yeah. he's a big reason for that. He's he's a great actor. He gets props, and I I, I regret ever saying he was going to be terrible because I was not <laughs> looking forward to his uh, era as as a Doctor Who at first. I was like, ah. I think but, that was most people, but he's de he definitely uh, did it justice. That's for sure. So uh, yeah, I'm with uh, with Stan too. I like Tom Baker uh, above all. Um. Cause just I, th I think a part of it was the, the, the seriousness of the of the the uh, stories, but as far as the new era of Doctor, uh, the Doctors, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of uh, been smitten by uh, you know, I'm smitten with uh, David uh, Tennant. I like him a lot. Really, 
But uh, I don't know. It's yeah. kind of. Yeah. I mean, I would say Eccleston, but he only he only had one series to work with. I think he could have been yeah. the best out of all of them. Uh, but between Matt Smith and, and David Tennant, I think Tennant wins for me. I don't know. I I, I think something about his eyes and. Just the way you can you can feel the weight of of his burden of his emotional burden, you know, just through his eyes. Uh, he, he had a I don't know, it's some kind of magic. Maybe it was maybe it's the fact he wore he wore a uh, Converse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe they have to battle it out. That's what's gonna happen. One of the stories that's gonna happen is Matt Smith and uh, David Tennant are gonna fight. Yeah. Well, I gotta say when um... spoilers, guys. When um, Matt Smith appeared in the first episode again, I was like, oh, I kind of wish he was the doctor again. Oh, <laughs> such a tease. Such a tease. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, okay, fine. Well, you never know. In, in this world of time travel and... Uh, Timey-wimey stuff. Yeah. Timey-wimey stuff, you know, and uh, you can have doppelgangers. You never know. There's, anything can happen. That's true. But they might find a way to bring him back if Capaldi can't uh, seal the deal, right? Yeah, I mean, again, time, time travel is like the best right, uh, narrative device in that aspect. It's like, oh, we went in Ronda Rice, so let's go back in time and fix everything. Yeah, except when they really nearly like break their only rule of being a Time Lord is like, don't interfere with your own timeline. And they just do it whenever like it strikes their fancy, right? Like, yeah. what, he, he phoned uh, the Impossible Girl at the end of that one. Like, that's a pretty big violation of that one rule, that only rule that you live by. And that's like a, that's like a universal uh, time travel rule too. You always hear that you should never interfere with yourself in the past because it, it causes a paradox or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, they definitely they've taken quite a few liberties with that rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, over the years for sure. So Zombie Boy in here, he's actually got lots of love for for Clara, which uh, we saw in our last episode. Uh, as a whole, not just us. But there's a lot of, like, uncertainty, we'll say, towards Clara. Mm. I still have mixed feelings about her. Um, but I think, I, I, just like Peter Capaldi, I think she could be great. But it doesn't matter anyway, because she's not going to be on the show much longer anyway, for one for one reason or another. Oh, that's right. What's what's happening with that? Well, originally, before they even started shooting the uh, Series 8, there was, like, some kind of behind-the-scenes stuff where she was saying she wasn't sure she was coming back to the show. Um, and, you know, there's been a history of people not getting along with Stephen Moffat, which is why Eccleston didn't last that long. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff there. <laughs> so, she ended up being on, on, on Series 8, obviously, but I don't think she's going to... Supposedly, now, for sure, she's not going to make it past the Christmas episode. Really? Yeah. That's and I, I have mixed feelings about that, because, like, can they really move things along enough so where it's because the whole thing i think i love the whole thing about the impossible girl that's such a great concept yeah although it's been solved though the whole impossible girl thing because he it, entered his timeline right that was the whole point that mystery's done right but i still think there's other yeah. other consequences i don't think it could be tied up that easily well because she's entered the timeline theoretically she can appear throughout the years because mm -hmm. she's supposed to, to save true. him from his mistakes right, so right. and she can die a thousand times so that way you know if we don't like this uh, incarnation of her you know, she, she can, can die come back as, yeah. and come back to something more interesting well the chat's like already her. the chat's already heating up about some of the uh speculation there we could get into quite a bit of discussion what they might do with that. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get to it tonight, but before, you know, let's take a little pause here and switch gears. We're going to play some voicemails. You guys ready for reals now? For reals? Sure. Yes. For reals? Right. Here we go. Hello. It's intelligent. It's amusant. I love timey wimey tea time. I don't know if you knew that Stan is from Gallifrey. This has been well documented by the Romanian intelligence agency, Servicio Român de Informații, SRI. And he has two hearts too. Some say he was a drinking buddy with the great Romanian poet, Mihai Eminescu. 
Bye. <laughs> That's awesome. I close my eyes and listen to Stan talk about uh, time and space. Whoa. It gets to me. We Love have no what you idea guys are who doing. This is. Go deep. <laughs> I know you can. What Go deeper. Take me to midnight. I'm being trolled. Take me to the sapphire falls of midnight. Where the yeah, stars gonna... are reflected forever. <laughs> I want a voicemail like that. <laughs> Someone leave me a voicemail like that immediately. Do we not have the best fans ever? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was, and I want everyone yeah, to know. Yeah, that saved Yogi, by the way. It... <laughs> My friend wants to have a copy of that. <laughs> it is, uh, yeah, it's saved. It's, it's immortalized in the... Wave file. I'm, ne I'm never gonna wow. let it go. It's gonna be like I'm never washing Stan. this hand again. <laughs> Stan is the man. Look at you, buddy. <laughs> he is, and that was not staged. Did we? We did not ask for sexy voicemails, uh, but we got them. So that that's pretty awesome. I, I, it's kind of hard to talk now. Every time I listen to those voicemails, I start smiling. <laughs> but not only was it sexy, but it was sex. It was smart sexy because the uh, the last voicemail. She made references to Doctor Who. The first one was great too. She knows her stuff. They both yeah. knew her stuff. Yo, he's in love. <laughs> well, I mean, she's <laughs> obviously a Doctor Who fan because, you know, she talks about the Midnight Planet. So there's an episode um, where I think I think he's with, traveling with Donna, and he goes to uh, the Midnight Planet to see Sapphire Falls. So, oh, that's true. I mean, when she mentioned that, I was like, wow, that's, that's, that's taking it deep. <laughs> take it deep. <laughs> <laughs> it, it did take me on a ride. I, 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 could, I love the, the um, that, was that your, one of your friends, the first one, Stan? Yes. I, I, I love her accent. I, I friend from quite... Romania. Okay. So I, go I, Romania. What was the last part she said? I heard that, the, that he has two hearts, and I heard that. Was she talking about Gallif that David Tennant came from Gallifrey or something? I don't know. <laughs> I gotta re-listen to it. <laughs> you gotta re-listen. Yeah. I, I, I'm terrible at deciphering uh, accents and type. I love the accent, though. She has a very unique accent. Is that how all Romanian people sound over there? The men sound like Russians. And the women sound like uh, borderline la la Latinas. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's why I could pick up some of it. So that's pretty cool, man. We need worldwide audience. Send us more voicemails. 206-415-497. They don't have to be like that. Don't feel like the bar was set high. You can, it can be whatever you want. This is the one thing we ask, you know. Not no, no, race. no, no. Send them like that for me. That's, <laughs> that's the only voicemails I'll be accepting from now on. <laughs> But yeah, exactly. But no, seriously, uh, you know they don't just make, just make sure that you know there's no not, no racism or anything trolly. You know, I know it's no, sort of... no VGO voicemails is what you're trying to say. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, we try to keep everything nice. You know, keep watch your language, and other than that, it's fair game. So uh, <laughs> yeah, no VGO type comments. <laughs> If you guys want to know what we're talking about and you're, you're morbidly curious, check out Video Game Outsiders. For, for, no, if it, for no other reason, because Matt's on the show. Oh, thanks, buddy. If you're going to plug me, plug ZombieCast instead. <laughs> <laughs> I know. ZombieCast is usually what I lead in with. Yeah. <laughs> I love John and Michelle, but um, I don't come off as good on <laughs> VGO as I do on ZombieCast. I know. I know. And children shouldn't listen to VGO as well, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely will not let my kids listen to that. No, no. Nope. <laughs> they got enough negative influences. <laughs> but, uh, Stan, we got some uh, YouTube comments too, right? Right. So uh, let's read some comments. Um, Claudia Jurowitz writes, I like strong female characters on Doctor Who. Finally, we've got equal characters that, doctor, that the Doctor can work with. That being said, I still don't get Clara and her attitude when the regenerated doctor looks older than the previous one. Right. Yeah. And I see, we talked about this before. Clara's yes. being written to be a stronger character, a, a strong female lead, which is fine. But then mm -hmm. at the same time, I feel like they're trading off the doctor's balls and his ability to be useful at all. So that's not a good trade off. 
<laughs> I, equals equal characters. That's the that's the operative phrase. If they're on equal grounds and they complement each other, they don't have to both be geniuses. You know, yeah. the the companions always have some traits that complement what a doctor lacks at that given time. Right. But a doctor is basically a baby in the old man's body right now, and it's a little frustrating. And Clara's like, I know everything. I can do anything. I'm Supergirl. Yeah, that relationship was just really weird. Like, she was, you probably already dissected this, but she was really just ticked off for no reason, I found. Yeah, it felt really out of like, character. Where is this Where is this anger and, like, hate coming from? Like, it's so weird. <coughs> Excuse me. Like, she knew the doctor, like, is a weirdo, and he's, like, 2,000 years old. And now she's starting to be a little odd about him looking old. Like, it just just seemed out of place, that whole anger. It was a bit Maybe much. Maybe he can't, can't get it up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reason. He, me- to he, meant, his, he meant his arm. Because he's, got a, he's got an old exactly. shoulder injury. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Sorry. Well, he's like writing down the time to edit that out right now. Well, you know, let's remember, kids, this is a non flirty uh, doctor, so. He's strictly business, and not that kind of business. He's not her boyfriend. Reason. <laughs> <laughs> we could help him send him a prescription. There you go. They got uh... space pills for that, don't they? He can go to the future. He can get that fixed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, here, here's our next comment. Uh, Patty Ambar, she wrote a very, very well thought out comment here in, in Spanish. I'm not going to read all of it because then I have to translate all of it. I'm going to kill more time. I'll probably come back to this, but it's this is this the reason I don't want to go through the whole thing is because this is going to be a whole conversation on its own. But she, this is I'm going to say the one part I think is very important. Um, Las problemas de la comunidad LGBT no son nada comparado con la decapitación y la discriminación de los cristianos en Siria, Iraq, y Egipto. You know, so this is a kind of it's not a political message, but it has involved some policy. Basically, what she's talking about is how Doctor Who helps us remember that, you know, actually she just said it exactly here. Um, una de las cosas que me ha decepcionado de el Doctor Who es que no hace lo que la ciencia, ciencia ficción tiene que hacer. Lo que estaba destinando a hacer. No se refiere a los desafi- desafiados de nuestro tiempo y de nuestro tiempo son preocupantes. So, I see what she's saying. All right, this is really deep. And uh, I, I'm a native Spanish speaker, and I had to reread it because I was trying to see what she was trying to go with this. Um, basically, she's saying that the thing that boggles her mind about Doctor Who, although she likes it, is that it doesn't do what science fiction should really do, which is uh, mirror current times in a, in a way that's kind of almost fantasy but still believable and has a frame of reference because the frame of reference is what we're going through now. So she feels like science fiction should be a vehicle for strife and represent that, that, that conflict that we, the real conflict we have. So we can identify with the subject matter better. And well, uh, she, she makes a fantastic point. And that's why, that's why Star Trek was so beloved. It's because oh, yeah. uh, everything was just a mini play based on what was going on. Like racism it was all about racism and um, segregation and, and everything like that. Um, I'm trying to, she raises a good point. I'm trying to think of how Doctor Who is trying, maybe the Daleks are supposed to be, I don't know, Nazism. I, I'm, that's a stretch. It's a reach. Um, well, yeah, but maybe it's missing the mark in that regard. Maybe that's kind of just the show it is. It's not trying to make a statement. I think, uh, Doctor Who represents conflicts that are always, that are always relevant. It's, it's timeless subject matter, which is good. Because you can always go back to it and you never feel like out of place with it. Um, but, you know, and she, she, she also talked about the LGBT stuff, how they're kind of integrating that into the world to show that they're aware of those those issues and that struggle. But that's nothing compared to the other struggles that are going on that need to get more more um, attention. That's, this is her point. And I understand. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I feel like sometimes we get so caught up in small potatoes. I'm not saying the LGBT community doesn't have to deal with big things, but there's people dying. There's people that are homeless. There's people that are wondering, you know, how they're going to make it um, and survive the next day. Uh, and those are kind of serious things, the life, death, life and death situations. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't want to get too hot and heavy, but 
I, I, I feel like there's nothing wrong with good old uh, escapism. And I think there's enough yeah. symbolism in Doctor Who to for it to matter and give us a frame of reference. But I think the esca- escapism aspects are, are, are just fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't feel like science fiction serves a duty to to be political commentary or you know a moral compass for our times. You know? Well, here's a question for you. Given its popularity, is there some kind of responsibility now for it to make a a statement? I was hoping you wouldn't go there. (laughs) (laughs) Like, given that it is very influential and it is worldwide and it has such an audience. Yeah. I wouldn't say that just because it's influential, it has a duty. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess I, I take my seat on the opposite side of Yogi in the sense that for me, art should serve humanity it should serve freedom and dignity so now doctor who has always wrestled with questions of power and uh ambition and greed but those are very abstract uh, concepts and mm-hmm. it hasn't really felt like it dealt with what's going on t- today in a real way so yes, they can they can go with the uh, LGBT awareness, and there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, we've got some big stuff going on right now, and they're not dealing with it. And I think that if they were great writers, they would. They'd try. Mm-hmm. I think it it doesn't need to be so specific. You know, if, if if it deals with human issues, human emotions, things that are always going to be there, thing, issues that we always deal with, there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, it's serving it's serving the community. And I agree, there is a responsibility, especially as popular as the show is, and it's, you know, it's got a global audience. But I don't feel it needs to be completely reminding us of everything that's going on already. If, as long as it's addressing those basic human th- principles and, and, and morals, you know. I, I mean, and, and the Doctor has a code, you know. He, he's not the kind of, of hero that goes around guns blazing. He doesn't just kill on sight. He, he, mm-hmm. he weighs out all the options, you know. I, I think that's beautiful. And, and there's a lot of good things we can learn from it. So I think it's serving its role. I just I, what I'm what I said is that art doesn't have to serve as you know the community in that aspect. What I mean is that it doesn't need to be a complete, you know, uh, regurgitation, you know, completely symbolic of what's going on today. You mm-hmm. know, it, there's other ways you can serve community without doing that. Now, if you do take today today's world and make it into a fantasy or sci-fi world, that's great. But that doesn't mean you have to do it that way. There's other ways. You could provide beneficial content. It's not just entertaining, but also useful. And I think Doctor Who does it just fine. Cool. Oh, sorry, Stan. On to the next <laughs> one before we before we give oh, that on. before we get deeper Wait. there. Can I just say thank you, Patty? Because that was awesome. Patty yeah, is awesome. Sure. Fantastic. See yeah. that she she went deep. She understands what we're about. Went deep. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. So next one, Dirk. Uh, Mathis, maybe German. I'm not sure. Um, I started to watch Doctor Who because of you guys. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. We have a lot of converts out there that some some are cursing our name because like, I can't stop watching. Damn you. That's all right. That's good. <laughs> That's the good kind of uh, anger. So if you're angry at us because we got you to the show and now you're hooked on it, awesome. All right. But I'm sorry your free time has gone away. <laughs> <laughs> Bor- Borgeta número uno writes, Uno de los problemas de Capaldi es que es el, hom- el ese hombre, un hombre mayor, que carece de las calidades de un hombre de experiencia, la inteligencia y la compasión. Se debe actuar con decisión, sopesar sus acciones con un fuerte sentido de responsabilidad y tener la sabiduría para sobrellevar la situación. Can so, I, I think I understand that. Can I try? Yeah, go for it. Can I try to decipher? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Go for it. Tell me if I'm completely off base. It, it feels like I'm reading French. No? It's close. No. Spanish and French are very close. Yeah. Uh, so I think what she's saying is that the only problem with Capaldi is that he's a man with... Uh, I'm probably butchering this, so please stop me if I'm making an ass myself. Uh, he's a man with experience and intelligence and compassion. Huh? 
Is that close? You're, you're, you're close. It. You're close. You're close. He lacks it. Is that what she's saying? Yeah. So basically, said one of the problems of Capaldi is that he's an older man who lacks the the qualities of a man of experience, intelligence, and compassion. Uh, so basically, talking about like he's kind of inept. Like you would expect from an older man or the older entity as he appears. You oh, know. I got you. Yeah. He would have all those things, but it's it, he seems to be devoid of those things. So she says, she says that, or he, uh, no, that's the she, Borjeta, uh, you know, that he should act with decision, you know, um, you know, to do his decisions with a, a strong sense of responsibility and and wisdom, you know, to to be able to uh, over to conquer every situation. And he might grow into that role, right? He might just be getting used to his... Get better. <laughs> Get better. And, and, and again, yeah. Again, uh, we say this is Capaldi's issue, but it's his character's issue because he's being written that way. I right. think he has every bit the acting chops to be an awesome doctor and probably one of the greatest of all time. I would go that far. I'm yeah, sticking by my, uh, my grade of uh, B+. <laughs> we did letter grades last time. And everybody was like, F. C minus. <laughs> I'm like, geez. I gave him a C so far, but but I I completely admit that uh, you know it's probably the writing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I may have been a little generous too, but you know <laughs> the thing is, just watching him, I'm excited to see more, and I'm eager, and I think this is, that at the end of the day, that's what really matters, right? Right. Yep. Next comment. What do we got? Melanie, she says, "Love your show." I'm beginning to see yeah. a, I'm beginning to see a trend here. Uh, Stan has given himself the short comments, and I got the long ones, the short and happy ones. Yeah, <laughs> what's up with that? <laughs> well, I'll follow it up, and we appreciate the love. We love you guys too, and we're glad you like the, you love the show. That's awesome. We're, we're feeling the love, believe me. But uh, Brandon Don writes, or actually Don. Uh, a veces me siento tan solo. All right, this is a this is a. T- uh, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna brace you guys right and now. Get the tissues out. You may want to get some tissues. Seriously, I'm not being facetious at all. All right. So he writes, a veces me siento tan solo. Estoy solo en mi pensamiento. No sé si el mundo me rechaza o tal vez yo rechazo el mundo. Pero cuando escucho su programa, no me siento como el desconocido. Las cosas se, son mejores porque tengo amigos que me entienden. I just got chills, man. So you want to translate that? Yes, please. Yes. Sometimes I feel so alone. Oh, my God. I'm getting a little choked up. All right. <clears throat> uh, I'm alone in my thoughts. I don't know if, uh, if the world rejects me or if I reject the world. But when I listen to your show... I don't feel like the black sheep, I guess the best way to describe it, or the, or the unknown person. Um, not really good. Uh, yeah, the unknown person. Be a stranger. A stranger. I don't feel like a stranger. That's the outsider. A, the outsider, yeah. It's the same, the same, the same heart of the message yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, things are better when I listen to you because I have friends that understand me. Oh, that's awesome. We have to leave that one. You're not alone. You're not alone. We, and that's what everyone in the comments. You, no, no one's alone. And you know, I, I really feel like this show is something that brings people together in in pleasant conversations. Like you rarely find someone that loves Doctor Who and is a real troll or really salty or negative. It's very rare. There's some out there, but it's a lot of love, and we're seeing it in the comments. Well, speaking of bringing us together, I gotta go. I know. I know. Oh man. <laughs> we wanted to make sure. You, we wanted to make sure you could at least stay around for that part. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. You guys, uh, you guys have a great show on your hands here. But uh, it looks like you're going to talk about episode two, anyways. So yes, we, we're off, just yeah. yeah, we're just in time for that. So we won't get too deep into it. Cause we do have to be mindful of the time. But uh, before you leave, do you have any uh, parting thoughts or uh, plugs? Oh, plugs, plugs, plugs. Uh, I'll do plugs next time. I'm on. I haven't earned the plug status yet. When no, I do man. two zombie cast. Come on, well, ZombieCast. I'm always going to plug ZombieCast. Uh, Monday nights, 8 o'clock on All Games Network. That's uh, allgames.com. We're doing some cool stuff over there, and um, we're just starting to kick off. And we're going to be in Atlanta 
uh, for the Walker Stalker Con. So if you're in Atlanta in the area and you like zombies, uh, look us up. And my Twitter is at Matto McFly, M-A-T-T-O-M-C-F-L-Y. I always love meeting new people. Like Stan here. And nice to meet you, man. Yeah, you too, buddy. Um, I was I was creeping your Facebook page. I hope you don't mind while you're talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you see some weird comments, no, I'm just kidding. I'll add. You. Uh, <laughs> no, but it was great meeting you and uh, Yogi. It's a pleasure as always. And um, yeah, I mean, like you said, Doctor Who attracts uh, smart, intelligent debate um, and heart. So I think that that's what this podcast is displaying. So keep on keeping on, my friends. And it'll be a stranger. You know, you're, you're one of our uh, guests on rotation, our hosts on rotation, better yet. I appreciate it. It's fun. Yeah. All right, All right boys. Have a good night. You too, buddy. Right, Take care. Good night. See you, man. Ciao.